just a little runaway. Forty-seven years and still I'm on the run. Afraid of love, I'm keeping God at bay. Spending days in a nightmare ain't much fun. I am just a little runaway. For my misery, always blaming someone else. I'm really into judgment and delay. But only hurting me and I and myself. Hi, everybody. It's Calico, and this is Beyond the Body. It might also be called Beyond Fear. <laughs> and um, I guess I want to just say that I'm going to start with the lesson that was for today. I just woke with some major inspiration about um, some things that have been going on for me and uh, how it relates to today's lesson. And so I'm going to read this right now. This is lesson 240. Fear is not justified in any form. Fear is deception. And I'm going to repeat that, and I'm going to use the real topic of this, this um, beyond the body is belief. Belief is deception. It attests that you have seen yourself as you could never be, and therefore look upon a world which is impossible. Not one thing in this world is true. I'm going to repeat that. Not one thing in this world is true. It does not matter what the form in which it may appear. It witnesses but to your own illusions of yourself. Let us not be deceived today. We are the Son of God. And I'm just going <clears> to <throat> read one of the comments from a dear friend of mine to this posting of this lesson. And he says, and I'm going to repeat the lesson, fear is not justified in any form. And he writes, even when the apparent nails are apparently being hammered into my apparent hands. <laughs> oh, I, do, I do love him so dearly. Um, yes, because all it is is fear. And fear shows up, uh, the experience of fear is there are apparent nails being driven into apparent hands. And that's what fear feels like. Um, so there was a, an experience, uh, a joining that I actually had with some mighty companions here in La Casa. Well, not La Casa, but we joined. Um, and it was about, and this is the beauty, and I must say this is kind of why I live in community, is to be around Mighty Companions so that when I'm not hearing, I can trust their hearing is probably better than mine. And uh, so there was a situation that happened. I went out to dinner with two Mighty Companions. And they, one of them had gotten this doctor's information in an email. The other one had heard from a friend about this doctor in the protocol. And then I was getting pesos and I saw a flyer from this doctor and this particular protocol. Now what was there for me, um, for those of you that have not been following, um, in 2009, I was diagnosed with stage four uh, uterine cancer. And um, that's a belief. I'll diagnose, everything's a belief. But that was a, a pretty big belief. And it really um, took some deep prayer and practice to move really beyond it to some degree. So when these mighty companions uh, were you know, sharing this, and I know I had seen that there were three of us, three mighty companions getting the same information, no conversation between the three of us. It's like, I hear that as guidance. 
And so we followed up on the guidance, and uh, one of them came with me to the appointment. And this physician here in Mexico um, challenged a lot of formally held ideas that I thought I had washed, but obviously they weren't. Um, he actually um, had the appointment in his house where he gives the treatments. And his house was fairly cluttered. Um, I still see off to my right shoulder, there's like a three foot plastic Yoda with a lightsaber. Uh, the TV's going. I mean, it was in my world, it appeared chaotic. And I really got, no, this is guidance. And there was a point at which, you know, I had some fear. And you know, <laughs> just to give you the full picture, well, at least a partial picture, there were chickens in the road right outside his place on the cobblestone street. Um, it wasn't in my, it wasn't even anywhere in my understanding that this could be a helpful physician. Um, I'm certainly not type A, and yet um, all the chaos, what seeming chaos, um, showed up as, really? <laughs> Holy Spirit, really? And um, I just really went deep with it. I really allowed that to sink deep. And there's been some conversations back and forth, and these protocols are very expensive, so I had to invite a, a banker in. And um, what was there for me was, and on one of the phone calls that I made to him, I, he was slurring his words, and I thought, I wonder if he's not drinking, which is also an issue for me. I have a belief in alcoholism, <laughs> and he was you know, showing it to me. He was reflecting it to me. But I kept hearing, this is guidance, three mighty, the trinity of mighty companions had the same information come from different directions. You know, that you just cannot um, take lightly. So all of this is playing out. Um, and at, at some point in prayer, I really got, um, it has nothing to do with the protocol that he was wanting to do for the cancer. And I must say, there was some fear on my part of going back into that world and developing hope. And, and this, is, this is a subtle distinction, and any of you that are sick can really be um, very aware with this and understand this. Um, I had moved beyond hope and just thought, live every moment fully. You know, with whatever is going on, just live the moment fully. In fact, David Hoffmeister, I had a call with him before I entered community, and you know, he even said, you know, if there's something that you need to do, chemo, radiation, whatever, um, you know, perhaps you should do it. And I said to him, because I was in hospice, they had given up on me. They, the medical community, had given up on me, and that was good news. I kept, I still hear myself saying, no, that's the good news. Because I didn't have to muck about in that world. And I'm not saying that you don't muck about it. It's just, where is your head while you're doing it? That's really, I mean, that's this whole practice. Doesn't matter what's going on in your illusion, delusion, um, don't get trapped in mind with it. Don't make it a belief. Ah, so in my case, and this is just my case, everybody's different, and this is where mighty companions are very helpful because they can support this process while we're all getting guided. So I had left hope, you know, the hope of healing, and I and I, I don't say that. It's not even, it's healing mind. I had left that world as that's not going to be helpful for healing my mind. And I was right. Coming into community was the perfect thing for me to do, and I can't say this has been easy, because it's not. Um, it has been extremely challenging, and... Um, and I get it's the direction I need to go in. 
So when this whole doctor and protocol thing came up, and it's very cutting edge protocol and very expensive, and <clears throat> and he appears confused, alcoholic, and there are chickens outside of his house. So it's just like challenging all these beliefs that I have in mind. You know, that there can be alcoholics, that there can be uh, conditions that I see that aren't good. Um, I mean, all of these things were being washed in a very quick period of time. You know, I really, I say I was in a state of beyond belief. Just like beyond the body, this is, this is another form of that, beyond belief. Um, it's like if I believe that doctors need to look, look a certain way, be a certain way, do certain things, then that's a limiting factor in my mind. And it's, and it's really, it's not to just go helter-skelter into the world and act like there's no world, because that's not what I'm saying. It's to hear guidance. And if I can't hear the guidance clearly enough, join with mighty companions that are going to hold the truth while I'm investigating this. Um, so that's what I did. I got the guidance, Trinity, okay, you know, and all these beliefs were coming up and getting washed. It's like... Why couldn't you go into an office and get treatment in a very confused state, you know, where the, the surroundings look confused? But again, that's my confusion because I'm projecting it. I'm perceiving it. So it's like it really took me deep. And, and I really I talked with uh, one of these companions about what was going on for me was really seeing it had nothing to do with the protocol that was being offered, it had nothing to do with the money that they were asking or the place that it was going to be performed, or the fact that I, I thought that I had a tumor. Um, none of that mattered. What did matter is there were some of these old ideas in mind that were ready to get seen again, seen through the eyes of Holy Spirit, seen through the eyes of light and love. And the one thing that I know about this doctor and my mighty companion that came to me with the appointment said the same thing. She said, he's, he's a love. He's an open heart. He wants you to understand the procedure. He wants to provide the procedure. And I saw that also. He was a sweetheart. He was a teddy bear. And anything else that I was perceiving was mine to clear. He was the Christ. And um, so I've been in a process of really clearing all that. But in the process of this, there are all these beliefs now surfacing. One of the beliefs, <laughs> um, besides this end of it, that um, any limitation I put on myself is a belief. And one of the... Th issues that's coming up right now is in community we have function and function serves to focus our minds to really hone our mind into whatever it is we're, that we're doing so no other superfluous thoughts can enter and so I have a rather see this is a belief and I'm not clear with this so you're seeing this process up close personal and real time um, I was seeing a lot of, a lot of my function is just so much. And there was another, the added function was we're now doing weekly <laughs> programs and, um, it triggered something and it was like, I don't know if I can do this. And this morning I was in deep, deep prayer. And what I kept hearing was it's time for you to move beyond belief. You know, if I'm believing that I, I'm too busy, that's a belief. And that's for me to take, put it on the altar, see it differently. Holy Spirit, help me see this differently. And really, as I'm saying this, I'm putting it on the altar to see it differently. Because I, I really want to be in the joy that I have been. Now, and there can be, you know, and I'm, and even as I'm talking, I'm getting guidance. It's like, now it's time for you to look at discernment. You've gotten real good at focusing your mind. Now let's discern. 
is there a way that you can refigure this to um, join with others, um, allow for something completely new and different to enter in? Um, and, and again, I'm hearing this as I'm sharing it right now. <laughs> this couldn't be more off the cuff. <laughs> There's no teleprompter giving me words. And I really get that this, you know, I told this mighty companion, I want to finish this one point um, that went to the appointment with me. I really feel like <clears throat> besides looking at all these beliefs that I have of the way things should look, it also took me into a, a conversation with Holy Spirit that I'm still engaged with a lot of it's not what you do. <laughs> which how many times have we read this in the Course in Miracles? It's not in the doing. It's not in the doing. Well, here we go. I'm I'm going in, into a deeper level of this and I am seeing that whether I do this protocol or don't do this protocol, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And that was my whole thing of doing a pro protocol would slip me into hope, hope to heal the form, which is also another bad neighborhood. The form doesn't need to be healed. Our forms are perfect, no matter what they look like. And I'm, I'm sharing this to particularly those friends of mine out there that believe they have a diagnosis and a condition or fear a diagnosis or a condition and really think it's real. Those apparent nails are apparently piercing my hand. Because that's the way it feels. And it really takes something to really have faith. And that's really where I'm coming into. And, and again, the protocol is superfluous, like his confused state. Like, I don't know if he's an alcoholic. I have no idea. And it's none of my business. He was given. It was guided. And I went to the appointment, and, and there will be more revealed on this, because I don't know. I'm, um, yeah, I have no idea how this is going to play out, but I do know it's for my mind, and my mind is not in my body. Mind is, there's only one of it, and it, it lives in the ethers. One of these days I'm going to do a Levels of Mind. It might be the next program, because David Hoffmeister's Levels of Mind has taken me down the rabbit hole so far much deeper and it's like this is if you can get the the one mind of Christ mind love that's all it is there's no fear in the Christ mind there's no judgment in the Christ mind there's nothing in the Christ mind except love and so this morning uh, Ricky played a song for us about having your breath taken away and I just you know I know I'm repeating myself for some of you. Um, when I was on oxygen, I had some major, major fears come up around not breathing and having my breath taken away. And this feels like being on the edge of a cliff. And it's having your breath taken away can also be ecstaticism, mysticism. Having your breath away can be just joining in the heart of God, joining in the one Christ mind of love, because breathing is not necessary to join in that heart space. Breathing is a belief, beyond belief. Having your breath taken away. So this is where I find myself, and I, I really, you know, I don't know, it's a program for living miracles, but it also is kind of a blog of stuff that, or a vlog, I just learned that word, vlog, of stuff as it comes up, because I think this would be most helpful. And all I know is this has been a very deep, deep journey. And this rabbit hole, and I, I just want to say a couple of things about last week's episode, if you didn't see it. <clears throat> Jackie Simpson and Suzanne are elders in the Living Miracles community, and we have joined in doing a new module for the doorway, which is an online course that usually you do by yourself. 
but this is a whole new module. And to kind of um, send it off in a loving way, the first um, go round of this particular module is going to be with a small group of people, maybe 20, 21. Um, for people, it's specifically geared for people that are sick, have a diagnosis, or really fear sickness in some way, or even sickness that really is affecting you on a very intimate level, you know, someone that you love. <clears throat> and I don't know if that's true, I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll, we'll check it out with the one mind. But I encourage you to fill out a, a, a form uh, to come into this program if you feel the niggle, if you, if you feel guided, because it's really going to be a profound, supportive go through of this online module. So we will be doing weekly Zoom meetings. It'll take about five and a half months, and there will be weekly Zoom meetings. There's going to be a lot of movies really geared towards illness or the belief in sickness or the belief in death. And um, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take everyone deep down the rabbit hole of their minds. Um, it is not about changing medications, getting off medications, getting on medications, doing procedures. None of that is really what this is about. So I invite you, hopefully by the time this program airs, there'll be a, a link that we can put up and you can fill out a request to join us in this particular program. And it'll be heavily facilitated um, by some of the elders in Living Miracles, myself, um, who knows? I don't even know who's going to be involved with it, but it's going to be heavily facilitated and there's going to be a lot of connection for five and a half months. You're going to have mighty companions all over the place. Um, so I invite you to join if you've got the niggle, if it feels like, yeah, just fill out an application and put all your fears in it. I don't have the money. I don't, I don't have the time. You know, my husband won't like me doing it. My kids are demanding too much time. Whatever your concerns are, write them in the, in the form. We're going to pray over everybody that puts in a request to make sure it's a good fit. And we'll actually have a conversation with you online through Skype to really, really see, because what we're looking for are people with willingness, maybe not have any knowledge of what's going to happen. In fact, you're not going to. This is a journey that is very much individualized, and it takes you from where you are. You don't need any previous information about A Course in Miracles, even, because we've put the book down. This is an experience, and I invite you into this experience with those of us that are going through it. And that's what this program is all about, Beyond the Body. I'm just taking you through my journey to move beyond the body or beyond belief into an ecstatic, breathtaking experience. And um, so anyway, that particular program is called... Um, the Inside Passage Home, and the module is called Rethinking Sickness. And it's like we're going to be working the mind, and we're going to be altering um, beliefs that we hold on ill, illness, dis-ease. And if you're, if you're feeling the niggle, please, um, you can Facebook message me, and you can Facebook message me anytime. Um, you know, I do respond. Um, and um, we can kind of take it from there. But if you feel the niggle, fill out an application, and uh, let's see what we can do together. Because I get this has never been done before, and, and just a side note, I was a chiropractor for 35 years, and I've seen it all in healthcare. I've seen it all. Oh, man, I can't even tell you what I've done. And the reality is this goes way beyond healthcare. This is really moving into beyond the body. And it's, it's, it's really going to take us all on a very exquisite and very deep journey into mind, into the one dysfunctional mind and moving towards the one Christ mind. So, um, yeah, with that being said, um, we are having a silent day here at La Casa. I'm going to have something on silence, too, because it's in the silence that you hear the guidance. And if you have a lot of distractions going on, you're not going to hear guidance. So it's one of those blessed days where we are in prayer all day, and it's perfect.
because that's where God comes through. The heart is there. And, um, it's a beautiful thing. So until next week, and for now, I'm doing a weekly program with fear, with all of it. I'm just going to be joining with you because um, I'm committed. And I, I get anyone that's watching this silly vlog <laughs> has the commitment somewhere um, because otherwise it would make no sense. I'm not sure it makes any sense to me, but that's a belief that I know something. And uh, I'm getting that I don't know anything. And um, Holy Spirit can use everything in my life for my good if I'm willing to challenge every belief that I've ever had. So um, until next week, folks, have a blessed week and find some time for silence. And, um, that's where the magic is. You can hear it even better and a minute or two every day. Love. Enjoy. <laughs> Why do you love me? He is fallible for the new love and new beliefs. Because you have a perfect, static state.